As a person in long-term recovery and as a certified in alcohol drug counselor who's worked with people in recovery for uh, quite a few years, I'd like to offer some simple tips on how to stay motivated in sobriety. And we're going to really dive in. There's a lot to unpack here, but first I want to mention that if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I invite you to consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And if you want to give us a thumbs up, uh, that would be great. And if you're on Facebook or some other platform, uh, consider going to a Mindful Emergence YouTube. There's over 50 videos on there, some of which you may find very, very helpful. So let's talk about this. First of all, let's look at the title. Uh, one of the words in here is simple. So what I want to point out is simple is not necessarily the same as easy. Okay. But what I'm going to talk about are things that we can do, you can do, uh, anybody can do. Okay. These are not uh, outside the possibilities for anyone who's in recovery. Okay. So in that way, they're simple. And I also want to address the word sobriety, which is a term that's usually associated with people who have uh, recovered or are recovering from alcoholism. I'm talking about a, uh, a way of being that's free from any kind of addictive behavior. So it can be alcohol, it can be other types of drugs, or any kind of compulsive behavior that has negative consequences. Okay, so let's explore this and dive in. So the first point I want to make is that addiction recovery is a process. It's not an event. And it takes time and it takes motivation. All right. I really believe the number one factor for success in addiction recovery is motivation. That's not something that anybody else can give us. They can inspire us. They can support us. They can help us in so many ways, but we've got to be motivated. We've got to want recovery more than anything else and be absolutely determined to do whatever it takes. I feel so strongly about that. <laughs> Maybe you can pick up on that with my tone. So, it's going to take time. It's going to require patience. It's going to take a willingness to go through the peaks and valleys of life in recovery, which brings me to the point. One thing I want to point out is uh, don't trust the pink cloud. All right. So when we stop using and maybe when our life starts coming back together, we have this, it's called a pink cloud, where we just feel great. Well, I don't want to take that away from anybody. It's really a nice place to be. But you know what? It's not going to last. And I don't, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be realistic because stuff happens. Okay. And are we able to ride out these difficulties that we're going to encounter in recovery? People are going to disappoint us. Disappoint us. People are going to die. We're potentially going to lose jobs, friendships. Things are going to happen. So we need to be patient. We need to be kind to ourselves. And we need to practice self-care. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. And most of what we're talking about is simple, small steps. And I'm not a big person on slogans, but you know that one day at a time, phrase you hear a lot, especially in 12-step uh, programs. It's true. <laughs> this is really a one day, maybe a one hour, maybe a one breath at a time process that we go through. So I want to offer some specific tips. Okay. These are things that I've learned and I think they apply for many, many people that I've known. First of all, the importance of community. I see it over and over again when people relapse and I asked them, what happened? In almost every case, they stopped going to meetings. They isolated from community. Surround yourself with people who are in recovery and especially have some people who've been in long-term recovery, but they don't all have to be long-term. But these are people that when you tell them that you're struggling 
when your ass has fallen off, they're going to look at you and not say, come on, man, get your act together. What's wrong with you? They're going to say, yeah, I get it. I've been there. I understand. And if you want to know what I've done, I'd be happy to share with you. People that can offer support. People that you can call up when you're struggling or people that are there in a meeting, you can listen to their experience, or as they say, experience strength and hope, and gain uh, coping skills from their experience that you can try if it, if it feels right for you. Second point, find a way to give. So find a way to serve others. And if you're involved in 12-step program or some other recovery-related program, there's all kinds of them out there, smart recovery and recovery dharma. Find a way to be uh, providing service in those groups, or it could be anything. It could be going and volunteering at a soup kitchen or picking up trash along the highway. I had a spiritual teacher who told me once, he said, you know, it's really, really hard to stay depressed when you're giving. And what it does is it gets us out of our own ego, out of our own stuff. And there's something that very profound happens when we serve others. So find a way to serve others. So there's some things also that uh, you might consider as a way of working with whatever is going on with you. One of them that I think is great is journaling. And there's no, it's no accident that in the 12 step programs and in recovery Dharma, and when I used to go to refuge recovery, there's a lot of writing involved. And apparently Buckminster Fuller, a very wise man says, I don't know how I feel about something until I write about it. And I've been journaling now for over 20 years throughout the entire length of my recovery. And I make a point, this morning I journaled because this is election day as I'm recording this. And, you know, I think we're all going through a lot of anxiety or angst. Just to not, never mind what side of the spectrum we're on. We're wondering what's going to happen. And there's a collective angst out there that we can feel. And so I sat down this morning and I journaled about how I was feeling about that. Very, very helpful. Another thing is let's deal with stuff that's happened in the past. I believe very strongly that all of us have experienced trauma in our background. We've all had traumatic experiences. And most everybody I know in long-term recovery has addressed that. Now, whether or not it's going to a therapist or a priest or a minister or whatever it is, we need to turn and face this stuff we need to explore it and be able to do it in a way that feels safe and supportive. I'm not uh, encouraging anybody to take any big emotional risk they're not ready for. So I, I really encourage you to address that. So you may hear my kitty cat. Uh, she may crawl up on my lap and that's okay, but she's <laughs> wanting to connect uh, as I think we all do. So I really encourage you to deal with that. Another one is get in your body. Now, I know many people who have an exercise program really find value in that. And I go to the gym three times a week. And there's something uh, that's very, very useful in, in doing exercise. And of course, also being conscious about what we put in our body. It might be helpful to back off some of the sugar and junk food and start eating more vegetables and and healthy food and healthy fats for our brains. But I really encourage you to take up, if you haven't already, some kind of mind-body practice. Now, it could be yoga, which some people see as exercise, but I see more uh, it more as a way of learning how to get better to tune into what's going on in my body. So it might be some other type of practice such as that, martial arts, tai chi, something like that. But I also look at meditation as a mind-body practice. If it's done the way that I teach it anyway, which is really uh, tuning into how we feel in our body, uh, practicing grounding, connecting, feeling the breath, 
and noticing sensations in the body as they arise and pass away. And what that also allows us to do is notice the stories in our mind. Eventually, we, you know, we can only distract ourselves for so long. I think it's really important that we start noticing what's happening in our body. Because for one thing, emotions show up in our body. Emotions are basically sensations in the body that we put a label to. So find some type of contemplative practice, some type of meditation practice, and engage in that. And uh, I actually teach a meditation class online uh, every Thursday at four o'clock. And I'll put a link in uh, the comments below on Facebook on how you can access that class. So a mind body connection, get in your body. So let's see, I got some notes here. I really covered, this is just a sample size. There are other things. And if you're on Facebook, I invite you to put comments or in YouTube, talk about the kind of things that you have learned that has helped you um, stay motivated while you're, you know, to, to maintain your sobriety, maintain your recovery. And just remember, do it for yourself, okay? Sure, we want to be better boyfriends, husbands, girlfriends, fathers, sons, employees, and so on. But instead of doing it for somebody else, do it for yourself. We're worth it. You're worth it. So stay the course. Keep your eye on the prize. On the prize. And thanks for watching.